Hello there, internets. Uh, today, hopefully, the dogs will let me get a recording in. Talking about the DCS F4E. Uh, right now, some of our neighbors are having uh, construction projects, and another neighbor is having a roof put on, so they tend to be a little bit barky. Or the mailman comes, or the Amazon delivery driver comes, or, you know, all that good stuff. So today we're talking about the DCS F4E for an, uh, Phantom module that has gone on for pre-order earlier this week. And this is a module that I have been looking forward to for a long, long time. In fact, about a decade ago, I had talked about or talked with Boeing about getting a license to develop a module for either DCS or at that time X-Plane, uh, you know, in-depth study style module. And the response I had gotten from uh, Boeing at the time was that, especially for DCS, that was going to be a no-go uh, because all the flight data and other information was still classified because Iran. And the last thing they wanted to do was to give Iran a cheap, commercially available, off-the-shelf solution to better train their pilots. Or so that's what was told to me. Fast forward a decade, and I know that... Uh, Eagle Dynamics had announced the F4E, what, five, six, seven years ago? And then it kind of fell off the radar and then reemerged with Heat Blur in the last couple of years. So we'll go through the trailer here. They're playing House of the Rising Sun, which is fine because my channel is demonetized anyway as I take a sip of my Wild Cherry Pepsi. So, growing up, this was the aircraft that, when we would go to the airport to visit people, you know, back in the days before the TSA, uh, and St. Louis had TWA, and we were a major hub, uh, people would come over, they'd have a couple three-hour layover, and we'd oftentimes go to, to visit friends, family, uh, maybe have lunch with them at the airport. I mean, you can't do that these days. But you would see a row of F-4 Phantoms in front of the National Guard section of Lambert St. Louis International Airport. Furthermore, my dad, as I discovered as we were going through some of his stuff as he moved into assisted living, uh, there's a picture of him at the delivery ceremony for the 5,000 uh, F-4 in the late 70s that was destined for Turkey. And it is the F-4 program along with the F-15 program that, as I've often said before, growing up, that's what put a roof over our heads. That's what paid for my college education. And that is what allowed us to get relatively wealthy. Um, maybe not jet set wealthy, but certainly enough that, you know, I don't have to rely on monetizing a YouTube channel to support my hobbies. It was nice for that few years where it subsidized my hobbies, but, um, you know, at least I had one of my hobbies pay for itself. <laughs> but growing up as a kid, this is the airplane that I wanted to fly. And along with the F-15, to a much lesser extent, it was always the F-4, and one of the reasons why I didn't go into the Air Force after college, I had my PPP, uh, PPL at the time, I had 20-20 vision, I'm 5'6", so I kind of meet all the requirements to fit in the cockpit of like an F-16, because I don't know if you've ever met too many F-16 pilots, they don't tend to be that tall, in fact, uh, I'm taller than Scott O'Grady. I've met him on a couple of occasions, just as kind of an example. But I felt that unmanned aerial vehicles were going to become the future, and I didn't want to fly drones. Uh, that wouldn't have been fun. Turns out, looking back at it, you know, man fighters haven't gone anywhere. So yeah, they have a, a couple of different options. Uh, I got the two-pack because a friend of mine got the two-pack for the F-14 and gave me one of the licenses. So that's why I have the F-14 
uh, module for DCS. I rarely ever fly it. Uh, so I decided I would return the favor with the F4. And then the, I also got the version that comes with the free t-shirt, or I shouldn't say free, t <laughs> you're paying for it, but the t-shirt the uh, as well, uh, because having an F4 t-shirt is always cool in, in my book. Uh, I had a couple of them growing up as a kid. I, I don't know if I can find pictures and scan them in or not, but uh, uh, we're going through old photo albums and stuff like that with my dad while he's still here, uh, mostly to figure out who some of these people are, because there are people in photographs that even my dad doesn't remember who they are anymore, uh, unfortunately, um, or never knew who they were if they were like old black and white photos from the 30s. So here they're talking about gesture, uh, the AI, and, and some of the things like I guess you can put things with uh, supposed to be dirt inside the cockpit and eh, okay, I guess that's kind of neat, interesting. Here they're talking about uh, all their video and photo and lidar capture and stuff like that. So there's a Luftwaffe F4, and a uh, fun story, I was uh, in Lüneburg, Germany at the time, walking to class one day, and I hear this distinctive rumble that I hadn't heard at that point in a decade, because around 1990, the uh, Air National Guard base in St. Louis switched from F4s to F15, I believe Alphas, if I remember correctly. And then maybe later Charlie's. But they had switched over to the F-15s, which I was kind of excited about because I also like the F-15. Uh, but as I get older, the F-4, uh, I think, has a lot more nostalgia. Because, again, I had a lot of friends' dads who flew for TWA that they flew the F-4 in Vietnam. So I was always surrounded by F-4 memorabilia. Uh, my dad had a fair amount of F-4 pens and patches and posters and everything brought home from mcdonald and uh so again but i look up and there's these two gray Luftwaffe f4s and yeah, this is the early 2000s i'm like oh yeah that's right they're still flying them and that i remember it was like one of the first sunny days in a couple of weeks uh, i think this was like about this time of year i think it was about early november and uh, that part of the world gets to be kind of gray cloudy cold damp every day uh, it was kind of warm, sunny, and, and two F4s flying overhead, and that, that that just made my day. <laughs> the uh, joke about flight simulator nerds and counting rivets. I don't go quite that far. There, there are people out there that who are. I'm more interested in performance and okay. I guess the different yeah okay. I usually turn the pilot bodies off in order to save uh, rendering headspace. That being said, it's probably time to upgrade to an i nine. 13.9. Um, I will probably be building that over the next couple of months. And then uh, turn the i7 here into a rendering or a, a video capture machine. Uh, retiring the 4790 from that role. Uh, which I got an external video capture card and stuff now. So I'm, I'm playing around with settings and getting some stuff ready for being able to capture video. Uh, without having to do it on the main machine, freeing up all CPU and GPU resources to power DCS or whatever I'm playing. I'm in on games like Battlestar Galactica Deadlock or RimWorld or something like that. It doesn't really matter, but it matters for DCS.
So here, I'm going to go ahead and play here. They're talking about that things like wear and tear will happen over time. But given the fact that DCS really doesn't have a way of saving mission progress or any type of internal dynamic campaign, each mission is its own instance. Unless you're giving that option to campaign designers where they can say, all right, you know, after this many flight hours uh, in the campaign, uh, you have a sticky widget. I don't see where that really matters unless there's more information about a coming dynamic campaign that they know that we don't currently. But there's been slight indicators that they are working on it in some of the background processes. But there's still a lot to be desired there. Uh, if you go into the mission editor and if you deal with a lot of scripting, which one of the things they did do earlier this year, and I should have done a video on it when they introduced it, was they gave us warehousing APIs, which now makes it possible to develop more dynamic, uh, especially multiplayer environment systems where you can set up, say, factories that if you destroy them, you know, factories to produce, let's say, AIM-120s. And from a gameplay perspective, make it to where maybe certain high-level ordinances are limited and have to be produced by these factories over time. Uh, interest, so you can create a more dynamic uh, environment for uh, multiplayer and, and things for like Gray Flag or um, Enigma and Tempest, those various, uh, even DDCS. Uh, I haven't checked in with Drex right lately to see where they are on that stuff. Uh, but even in, in custom programming things myself, which I'm getting very much more interested and have time now again that I can get into developing maybe some multiplayer environments. But I want to do more interesting conflicts and, and simulations, let's say like uh, uh, 1970s bush wars in Africa, the Angola Civil War, uh, the Angola South African War, Rhodesia and uh, Bush War, and, and kind of some environments and times and places in there with what we have in DCS, which is kind of a little bit more challenging because basically I think you'd have to include the World War II asset pack, which not everybody has. And anyway, that's a topic for another day. Here they're talking about the rewrite of gesture and then gesture, you know, punching out if you insult him, which is kind of a running gag because in the F-14, they would, uh, a gesture would just randomly, for little reason at all, if you got a little bit too close to the ground or something, would just automatically eject and on the F-14 take the entire canopy with them. So... Uh, they're also going to allow you to program if you have some scripting capabilities and abilities and knowledge to program gesture to behave in, in certain little different ways. So I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of gesture AI mods. There's already a uh, running joke that there'll be, you know, the, the rule 34 gesture, the waifu gesture, the girl's gesture, something. And I'm sure there will be. Oh yeah, and they've come, gone with Meteor again, and F4 will have its own soundtrack. It'll be interesting to see if that's under uh, like a Creative Commons type license, where you can use it in the background of videos and things like that. Bolo. Reichthoven. Ooh. Vinyl, you know, I have to have a, why not 8-track? I mean, we are talking about the 1970s here. Um, yeah, I know the hipsters got back into vinyl 10, 12 years ago, I guess. Uh, in fact, the Best Buy by us just shut down and closed the store. And they had, I think, vinyl, a record player. Um, son of a, my dad had a record player that I think we got rid of. I think we donated to Goodwill uh, when he sold his house uh, three years ago now. But yeah, this is the F4. 
Uh, I've been very reluctant to pre-order things from Eagle Dynamics and certain other developers. <clears throat> Whereas, bam, I didn't buy the F-15E until basically it was released and you could see what you were getting. Um, I think I will probably, well, will, I have. It's shut up, take my money. It was available, I immediately went and pre-ordered. Uh, I trust Heapler in delivering a, a pretty decent product. Now, there are going to be people, people who gripe that they still haven't released everything they said they would for the F-14, in particular, Iranian version. And if what I was told by Boeing about 10 years ago is true, there may be some reasons why that's not happening but it did take them some time to release the f-14 um a model with the shitty engines <laughs> or the shittier engines um which is what a lot of people i know they, they were f-14 a pilots uh butch uh mooch uh, a couple of other guys uh that or, well, Butch isn't on the YouTube scene, but people know who he is down in Pensacola. Um, and, and other things, they're, they're F-15, or F-15, F-14A pilots. Um, yeah. Uh, it'll be very interesting to, to get this module. I'm, I'm very excited about this. I imagine we'll probably see it by the end of the year. Although I think they're saying that merchandise is going to ship in February, so it may be after the first of the year. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, no exact release date's been given, but generally when you see pre-order, if it doesn't make it into the November patch, it'll probably be the December patch in time for Christmas. But uh, uh, with that, I will be doing, once it's added into Liberation, Retribution, things like that, I will be... Uh, doing some DCS campaigns, provided that certain puppy dogs behave and don't bark their heads off in the background. So I guess I have to go back to doing video recording and stuff like that later at night after the little one's gone to bed and these two are exhausted. Because uh, if I try to do recording in the, in the morning and stuff, there's just always too much stuff going on in the neighborhood. Too many squirrels in the backyard to bark at. And all of that good stuff. So... With that, I think I'm going to end it here before I sneeze. I'll see you next time.